Hello everyone and welcome back to Computer Vision Lecture Series. This is Lecture 3, Part 1. In this lecture, we are going to talk about image filter, image filters, uh, specifically linear filters. Um, we are also going to talk about how these linear, uh, different kind of linear filter filters, as well as we are going to see some examples of those linear filters. Specifically, we'll cover filters like mean filters, Gaussian filters, and how or which uh, filters are considered convolutional filters. Similarly, we also talk about uh, the characteristics of linear filters and also uh, one main characteristic called separability. So what is the formal definition of filtering mathematically? Uh, before we talk about mathematical definition, let's see, uh, let's see what we really mean in real life, uh, what filtering means. Let's say you have, you're going out in a summer, uh, summer afternoon to enjoy, enjoy the, uh, for a bike ride, let's say for example, and then you need uh, shades. To protect yourself from direct sunlight or too bright um, reflection from the sun and you wear those shades the shades are acting as a filter for direct sunlight for you these are physical filters okay uh, you might have also heard about instagram filters or filters used in photoshop in softwares like photoshop and you are right that they are also considered filters and they are spe uh, specifically in the domain of image filters because they are operating on image level so here is the point where we discuss what is the formal definition of uh, um, filtering in image uh, image filtering. Uh, basically, you have a filter of uh, size k cross l, and you have an image of size m cross n. And when you do an operation over a neighborhood of the image, and you calculate some values over that neighborhood, that computation, this computation function, is called uh, filtering. And um, uh, you do this for every each and every location across the image and you find uh, and you generate a new image basically uh, why is filtering important because it helps to enhance images for example saturation improvement contrast enhancement histogram equalization resizing denoising things like that you can also extract important information from images using filtering for example edges textures uh, some patterns you can also detect some templates predefined templates that you are looking into so uh, this is this is the basics of filtering right uh, what are linear filters now we want to know what specifically we mean when we say uh, that a filter is linear so in order for a filter to be linear it has to satisfy two important properties or characteristics uh, first is linearity here f1 and f2 are um, filters and i is an image if this property says that if you have two different filters and if you combine them linearly um, and then do you do a filtering operation that is equivalent to applying each and every uh, individual filters and converting uh, and then uh, doing a addition of these uh, filtering operation individually and if this relationship holds then f1 is considered to have a linearity property Another important property is shift invariance. So let's say if you shift a pixel location and then apply a filter or uh, you apply a filter and then you shift. If these, this property holds, then the filters are considered to be shift invariant. And if you convert and if you have any filter which, which follows or which satisfies both these properties, then they, are con they can be considered as linear filter. So any linear shift invariant operator can be considered as convolution. That is our basic definition of convolution. The convolution is an operation which is um, which satisfies these properties. So it makes sense to go ahead and talk a little bit about what is the difference between con correlation and convolution. You guys might have heard about correlation before as well as convolution in other image processing uh, lectures or pattern recognition or uh, pattern analysis. Uh, there is a tiny difference between correlation and convolution. Uh, we are going to look into it. Uh, formal definition of correlation so before when i sh showed you uh, the mathematical definition of filtering it, in, it it was basically a definition of correlation here you can see the matlab function uh, im filter that can be used directly for a correlation here f is um, a filter and i is the image and you apply this filter across the image using this equation that is called correlation here is a uh, mathematical definition of uh, convolution it's a bit different than uh, the traditional definition of convolution uh, sorry traditional definition of correlation you can see that the signs here are um, negative they are uh, uh, a bit different so uh, mathematically 
convolution is similar same as convol uh, correlation when you do a 180 degrees rotation of uh, the correlation of the filter and then apply so uh, uh, so they are related in this sense however if the if your filter is symmetric then your convolution and correlation operations uh, become the same um, here is an example of how you do filtering in OpenCV. Uh, the reason I am showing this to you is because in exercise 1, you will be mainly doing image filtering and therefore this is cv2.filter2d -filter is the filtering operation um, in OpenCV. It's the same for correlation as well as convolution. So we want to go ahead and see what are specific properties of convolution. Convolution is a linear operation as we already know. Um, it is commutative, commutative. That is uh, A convol B is equivalent to B convol A. There is no, um, yeah. So if there is, so when you can, when you think about an image, an image is a 2D signal and therefore um, it can be considered, so image and signal are synonymous in this case. Uh, filter is basically a small group of uh, pixels. It can be of any size and uh, when you look at it in a you know, perspective of uh, uh, image, uh, image is a matrix of uh, numbers. Filter is also a matrix of numbers. So basically the, the difference between filter and signal or image is more or less the same. Okay, um, another property is associative. So uh, convolution operation is also associative. Uh, the, uh, basically it means that you can apply uh, successfully any filter one after the another. The key difference between um, uh, convolution and co correlation is that correlation is not associative. Why is it important? We, we are going to look at some examples later on uh, which which, ex, uh, which, ex, uh, which explains wh what's the main difference between convolution and, and correlation and why their uh, application area are a bit different. Um, another property is uh, it's a distributive over addition convolution and also it scales out factors like um, scalar values basically. And it is also it also has identity. So if you apply if you multiply an identity function with the uh, with any signal uh, a through convolution operation, it will give you back the original signal. Okay. So one we, we move on to a specific filter called Gaussian filter. Here you see um, a matrix on the right hand side, which is um, so the definition of um, uh, basically uh, Gaussian filter is this relationship where sigma is a standard deviation uh, and e is the exponent raised to the power x square plus y square divided by 2 si sigma square. Um, this matrix is generated by a uh, combination of different values of x and y and uh, using sigma of 1 and as you can see the middle value is the largest and as you go away from the center the value decreases. Uh, this is a 2D representation of the same Gaussian um, matrix in a bigger image for uh, in a bigger big, bigger image uh, sense here you can see that in the center the values are high and as you go away from the center the values uh, drop this is a 3d representation of the same Gaussian filter so basically as the pixel, pixel distance increases the weight decreases that's uh, what is a Gaussian filter um, how do we do smoothing? Uh, so Gaussian filter, when you when you think of it, when you apply it to an any image, it basically converts it into a smoothing. Uh, it smooths out the images. It takes out the high frequency values or uh, and only allows uh, low frequency values to pass. Basically, it removes edges and uh, um, you know preserves uh, continuous um, connected components here. So continuous values like this stick, this stick uh, um, color is represented here however the edge information is lost here so therefore we consider Gaussian filter as a smoothening operator in this case it's not a very good result but in certain cases when you do when you want to apply smoothing Gaussian filters are um, uh, are helpful in that case uh, the difference between block box filter and Gaussian filter is that uh, in a box filter the, uh, the pixel values do not decrease as you go away from the center. It has a fixed uh, region in the center of the filter which has a fixed value of um, 
a predefined value and then when you apply to it in the um, on any image you see this artifacts of steps that you see across the image and it is due to this um, due to the design of the box filter um, we, we, we want to look at a bit um, so what are the properties of Gaussian filters we know we saw that uh, it does not preserve edges so we can consider that it's a low pass filter which removes uh, and edges are considered to be high frequency components in the image and it does not preserve that images become more smooth a uh, very important property this one uh, when a Gaussian kernel is convolved with a Gaussian kernel it generates another Gaussian kernel which is very cool and we will see that how it can be helpful uh, later and when you do con convolve two different Gaussians uh, the uh, resulting uh, Gaussian if, you, if it has the same standard deviation then the final Gaussian will have a standard deviation of square root multiplied by the original standard deviation uh, the most uh, another interesting property of Gaussian filter is that they are separable kernels. What we mean by separable is that if we have uh, a Gaussian filter of 2D, we can uh, separate them into two different one-dimensional Gaussian kernels. Let's uh, take specific example. Here you see that this is a 2D Gaussian kernel with sigma is standard deviation across x and y values. These are two-dimensional. Therefore, uh, x and y represents two dimensions here, and uh, when you you can uh, when you separate them, it can be separated simply by um, uh, virtue of um, uh, exponential um, addit add additive property. So it can be so any two D Gaussian can be expressed as the product of two different um, Gaussian functions. What is interesting here to note is that we can choose the way we want to look at uh, one, uh, at each and every one dimensional Gaussian kernels. What do we mean by that? Let's take a numerical example. Um, so here we have, um, so here is the, uh, um, here is your uh, Gaussian kernel. You can see that the center value is high and as you go away from the center, the value uh, decreases. This is the 2D convolution and this is a, a image location specific region where we want to apply this convolution operation. So what happens here is you multiply each and every value, corresponding value, and then you f sum up, sum them up and find out the center value of your final location. Here is a very uh, simplistic example, but if we separate the two kernels into two one dimensional kernels, so basically you convert into a, con a column vector and a row vector and if you multiply it, you get the original 2D Gaussian kernel. Um, so what do we do here? Uh, let's say if you perform along the row, this convolution operation, you get this kind of um, uh, a row uh, output value. Similarly, uh, then uh, you apply successively on this output value, your uh, column um, filter, one dimensional filter, and then you generate the final value, which is equivalent to the applying a 2D Gaussian kernel into the original input uh, image. Uh, what is What do we mean by separability? Why is it important? It saves computations. Uh, specifically, let's say if you have an image of M cross N size, and if you have a filter of P, P cross Q, Basically, the number of computation that you will do is M, N, P, and Q. This is a multiplication. Uh, roughly, it is this complexity that you will get. And if you have uh, a separable 2D kernel, then you can separate them and then multiply them. What does what this does is basically reduces the, your number of uh, computations. And therefore, uh, the speed up that you get is almost 4.5 times faster. And therefore, when you think about bigger images or if you are uh, processing a lot of thousands or millions of images per day which uh, big companies like facebook google do uh, this speed up is extremely essential uh, some practical matters while considering filtering so what about uh, uh, applying this filter at the edges of uh, the images when you go near the edges for example uh, if this is an image and if you go, if you want to apply uh, for, for example, this is an image. If you want to apply this filter uh, for this uh, um, last corner uh, pixel, then how do we you consider the neighborhood uh, values? So there are few practical considerations that you can do. Uh, basically, it for, uh, because if you go around and if there are no values, then you can restrict yourselves inside the image and do not go beyond these edges or you can apply um, uh, one of these four uh, methods 
basically either you apply zero padding across the image such that the sizes of um, such that uh, when you such that you can convert you can calculate the basically the uh, uh, filtering of your edge uh, edge pixels or you do a wrap around basically what uh, what it means is that you get these val uh, values on the right hand side of your uh, image towards the left hand side and pad it here or you uh, or you do a copy so this is your vertical edge you copy this the, the value near the edge on the right hand side towards the left hand side and that's how you reflect across these edges and you generate um, uh, so that you can uh, calculate uh, filters uh, filtering of, of your uh, edges Uh, let's let's take an example. Uh, let's see a few examples of linear filters. Um, this is a identity filter. If you apply on this original image, you will get basically the original image back. Um, what if you have this kind of filters uh, with one over here? Uh, how do you think uh, the image will look like? Just take a moment and imagine because this is important. Um, when you look at an image and you have the filter kernel here. Uh, you start applying from the top left corner right so um, you multiply each and every pixel value with the with this value uh, with the neighborhood of um, this filter and then you sum it up and then you store it in the center so can you imagine what it uh, what your output image might look like a hint it's a shift operation okay if it is a shift operation will it shift towards the left or will it shift towards the right because this one is on the right, you might think that it is shifting on the left. However, remember that in filtering operation, you replace the center pixel. So if you're putting this image, uh, this filter over this image and you're calculating the uh, output of this filtering operation, you will replace the center value. So basically you're shifting one pixel over towards the left. So basically you will get um, something like this. You, uh, your original image will be shifted on, uh, to the left by one pixel let's take a look at a bigger uh, another filter called a box filter box filter is nothing but a values of ones um, in a size of 3 cross 3 it could be any size uh, 5, 5 cross 5 6 cross 6 11 cross 11 um, 1 by 9 is a is a weight weighting value so what we do is basically apply uh, compute a mean of um, 3 cross 3 neighbor and divide it by 9 so that we do not um, so we so we constrain the values it, uh, the values do not explode um, it, it achieves what does uh, box filter does it achieves uh, some smoothing uh, effect uh, the reason that it sums to one is as I said before uh, so that the values do not explode uh, we saw before how box filters output looks like here we see it again as you can see uh, it does actually smooth the image however um, we also see some artifacts appearing uh, like the steps or the edges uh, appearing a, a lot along the image and this is one of the back um, backdrops of uh, using box filter uh, let's let's take a look uh, a bit deeper into how this how this uh, computation was achieved um, you have an image here of uh, values as shown here and you have uh, an out your output image and you want to apply your box filter across this image so if you put it on the top left corner of your image and you do um, a pixel wise uh, multiplication and a sum what do you think the output will be in this central location because these all values are zeros it will be a zero uh, let's shift it uh, let's shift towards a bit uh, one pixel value towards the right and in this region you see that the, uh, this value 90 is coming so it will be multiplied by one so 90 divided by 90 9 will be 10 and it will replace this location in your output image similarly as we go ahead we generate other values in the uh, output image what do you think this value would be because in this input image the filter location uh, covers all the input values to be 90 it will generate a 90 value and this is the final output image that you see here Um, view, what is a Sobel filter? Sobel filter is basically uh, a vertical edge filter. In this case, in, in this example, uh, the design of the filter is seen here that you see some positive values on the left and some negative values on the right and uh, zeros in the middle. Uh, think about it. When you do this, uh, when you apply this filter across this image, um, every value 
on the left of this uh, middle column will be uh, summed up and um, will be highlighted more exaggerated whereas on the right hand side it will be um, it will be uh, it will be suppressed so when you do a summation it basically will give you an edge towards the vertical direction and this is what we see on the right hand side a vertical edge of operation we are only taking absolute values in this case and let's not, let's now flip the filter here on the top row is the all positive values in the middle is zero and the bottom is negative and when you apply this over the whole image you will generate um, an output image which enhances uh, more horizontal edges so let's take a, a, a look at both this uh, simultaneously here you see that vertical edges like for the near the collars they are uh, enhanced whereas here uh, more horizontal edges are enhanced so we'll filter also so basically what it does is uh, does an edge enhancing and uh, it's also slightly smooths the output image and it also has positive negative values this is how you do um, uh, filtering uh, with Sobel operator in uh, in MATLAB um, when you apply this uh, Sobel operator across um, the image it generates some some an image like this it it contains a lot of uh, because the filter contains negative values a lot of values are suppressed in the output image and so in order to see uh, look into this more in, in more detail you, you can um, you can shift your output range by 0.5 and then you can you will be able to see more uh, edges in the image uh, you have to be very careful with the negative numbers basically you need to care you need to verify what your in, what your range of your input image is and based on that you can use um, you can use this uh, Sobel operator apply mean add mean towards the in the output image and then you will be able to generate uh, a good um, edge detection um, edge, edge detected images uh, this is an example of uh, in the of the, in the output images in, in first channel the values which are below um, zeros and the values which are uh, above zeros okay so convolution as we saw all this filtering operation is basically convolution because we are our image uh, our filters are uh, symmetric in nature so this is i think the right time to introduce um, the convolutions in convolution neural networks this is the basic filter used by all the convolution neural networks out there the only difference is that um, those kernels are learned so you have a lot of data and you are initializing your kernels you are assuming some random values of your kernels and then you're learning from data what those filter values are if you're taking deep learning lectures you already know how this works and if you don't then uh, you can expect something like this when you take the deep learning lecture so what does convolutional really mean we saw that convolution is a linear operator let's convolve an image with itself and uh, with some zero padding and see how the output image looks like so here you see I, uh, D is an image input image of this um, size and when you multi uh, when you do a convolution of the image with itself so what you and, and you want to add uh, some zeros uh, around the image so that you can your filter uh, can uh, span every corner of your input image so in this this example um, one of the image is a filter and so in this case uh, the top left is uh, your filter and the and the cent the one in the center is your original image you know in this case both of them are the same right so when you convolve one uh, image with itself you get an output something like this this is an this is this um, the difference between these two outputs is that in this output um, there are there is no zero padding whereas in this case in this output you, the, uh, there are zeros padded along the uh, image and we are able to generate this and you can see that the center point is highlighted basically when uh, the filter and the image when they are in the um, overlapping one another in the center the highest or the most brightest point in the output image will be here and this is what basically a convolution looks like but what's the difference between uh, convolution uh, and correlation in this example a equals to b uh, a equals b convolved with c here we see the three different um, A, B and C images. Uh, as we discussed before, any image can be considered as a kernel and any kernel can be considered as an image. In this case, all of them are of the same size. So we are considering them to be uh, interchangeable. C here we see is a Gaussian filter or something like that. Um, B is a set of uh, pixel values which uh, range from white to black. 
and um, when you convolve both of this, what happens basically is um, um, B you, uh, in the output image you see B repeated along um, or C the the pattern that you see in C is uh, you see it in the uh, two halves of the output image. So it looks like either B finds C or C finds B. And it's something it looks like something like uh, it could be a template matching like you are looking for some patterns uh, template here could be uh, a Gaussian filter like this or a B and you're looking for it and then you convolve with these two values to find this so it can um, look like it is a template matching something like that so uh, filtering can be also viewed as comparing your image with what you want to actually find inside the image okay so how does this relate with correlation and convolution and what's the difference uh, let's see so correlation here means uh, let's say you have an input image d and you want to find out this pattern in this image uh, as you can see here that this uh, this pattern um, or if you say if you call it uh, f2 um, it's a filter and you want to find out this pattern in the image uh, as you can see this pattern is not uh, symmetric it's asymmetric so when you uh, do a correlation of this pattern um, in this image um, you're, you'll be able to find out a point or highlight where you are able to see or, uh, or localize where this pattern is actually um, matching exactly matching your input image so that is what correlation does another example of co convolution is when you do convolve these two the filter with the uh, input image uh, basically what this does is uh, in this image it finds out where or in which locations it can find uh, patterns similar to this so you will see in a lot of images a uh, lot of regions of this output image something like this vertical uh, bar uh, appearing in a lot of places this is the basic difference between convolution and correlation when the filters are asymmetric Correlation basically highlights the exact region where the template is found. The template in our case is this filter value. Whereas convolution finds the regions that might look alike the template. Um, yeah. And this concludes our um, uh, first part of the lecture three. In the next lecture, in the, in the next part, we will talk about nonlinear uh, filters. Thanks for watching.